Hello and welcome to Smarter Tech. I'm here with R Blank. And in case you don't remember, or maybe you haven't seen the episode, episode 59 and 60 of the Smarter Tech podcast were with R, who's uh, an electrical engineer and he's the CEO and founder of Shield Your Body. R, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thanks for having me. And yeah, just quickly, I, I uh, in a past life, I was a software engineer. Um, uh, and and taught taught software engineering at, at University of Southern California, not uh, not an electrical engineer. Not electrical, my bad. Uh, but still, you are extremely well versed in testing of RF and mm -hmm. EMF blocking products because you produce them. You also part of your journey is also uh, you your your dad um, was uh, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Martin Blank, PhD, mm -hmm. from yeah. the Columbia University, who uh, in my mind was one of the most important EMF scientists um, um, alive uh, and wh whose research has really influenced how I personally thought about EMFs when I read uh, Overpowered. And I think, did you guys collaborate on that book yeah we wrote well? that together that yes. was my introduction really into the field as well so wow yeah. so and yeah so for, that book your kind um, words. i mean my book of course i recommend my book but overpowered and <laughs> <laughs> of course i recommend my book what, what do you think but my my is <laughs> mine is really a shorter version that is not a, a let's say a scientifically toro book and that was not the goal but overpowered mm -hmm. or even i mean even deborah davis's work or other books out there go way deeper than mine so i do recommend consuming multiple books and overpowered is really one that i appreciated a lot that really almost uh well it did shock me <laughs> because because of the way the science is explained and whatnot so that's that's your background and with shield your body it's one of the very few companies out there that i trust and i went into it in 59 and 60 so i want um, spend too much time on this, but today I wanted to address certain controversies or cert certain misunderstandings, including my own misunderstanding around EMF blocking products. Um, one of them that I don't quite get is the fact that when I talk to certain nonprofit organizations, uh, even certain scientists, there's a um, what I could call a prudence, almost borderline paranoia towards EMF blocking products. And for sure, the entire industry is unregulated. So a lot of players out there create random products without any regard to does it actually work, right? It's more like, yeah, does, does the market bite and can I make money off of it? So there is a big problem in an industry where there's many random products that don't work. But since there are products that work, why aren't these products being endorsed more widely? And do you think that this is because of the fear that maybe consumers, if they use an EMF blocking case, then they're going to disregard the basic EMF hygiene that we tell them to do? So is wow. this something yeah, like no. that? So that's, that is such a great question. And um, there's, a lot, there's a lot to unpack there. So I'll, and I don't have a particular order to go in. So I'm just going to sure, start talking and, and you cut me off however yes. you want. Um, so, well, first off, as you say, there are a lot of products out there that are just bogus. Um, they, uh, they do literally nothing. And, um, they, and a lot of them are very successful in, in marketplaces like Amazon, you know, yeah. you put a little sticker on your phone and all of a sudden it's safe. And it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's so, so there are a lot of bogus products, I believe, uh, and I don't think we covered this in Overpower, but my father told me about it while we were writing. There was um, one of the uh, leading scientists at the time had endorsed a product and it turned out to be bogus and it was a bit of a scandal. But, you know, all of that is by saying, you know, a lot of the people that you are talking about are uncomfortable about endorsing products like this for a variety of reasons, but a lot of them still, um, you uh, use, use these products. So a lot of these same scientists who won't, uh, and they talk to me about it. They, they won't endorse any product from any company, uh, but they will still use my products and they'll still use other people's products. And because they know that they work, there is part of it that, um, 
they feel, and not incorrectly, uh, that safety standards, safety, uh, the mix of improving safety standards and proper EMF hygiene are really the two things that have to happen. And proper EMF hygiene, we yeah. all have control over right now. Safety standards, you know, that's, that's going to take a while. Yeah. Um, and there is a degree to which they just want to focus their efforts on those initiatives. But that leaves people uh, unprotected, right? Because even if you can improve all of these safety standards, and even if you use, you know, every reasonable form of EMF hygiene, there are still these exposures. And EMF protection products at that point are the only things that can prevent, uh, that, that can reduce your exposures, that can provide that level of, of protection. Now, in addition to the bogus companies that I mentioned, there's a lot of irresponsibility, in, in my view, in how even legitimate EMF companies represent their products. And, and you and I were chatting about this just a minute ago. Yeah. Where, you know, because uh, we're, 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 we're companies and we market and consumers want solutions. And EMF is a really, really complicated set of ideas, you know. Uh, it, 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 I mean, it, I'm still learning stuff all the time, and I've been doing this for 10 years. It's really complex, and it doesn't present itself to just simple solutions. And so when you put out a test and you say, look, it blocks 99.98387% of the radiation, you're fine, right? I mean, that does give a misleading sense of comfort. To people and so yeah. you have you have this array of companies some of which are totally bogus some of which are legitimate but i feel are very irresponsible in their marketing and uh and it's all taking place in this context where things the, the issues involved are incredibly complicated and i i can understand uh reluctance to kind of get involved in that sort of mix um from from the uh, academic and scientific uh side of things that said, though, I would reiterate, you know, legitimate EMF protection um, is really the only thing left once you practice basic EMF hygiene. Like carrying your phone. That's one thing that I talk about all the time. I, you know, I, it's the number one tip I give people, probably you too. Don't carry your phone in your pocket or your bra. Sure. Or if you do, put it in airplane mode. Yes. And yet for a lot of people, that's just not practical. They're out and about. They need their phone on. So what, what are you going to do? I mean, at that point, EMF protection is the only um, option. Exactly. And EMF protection that works or else, again, you let's say you use a case that is that has a bad design, and we talked about it briefly in, in, in our previous conversations. It has bad design, maybe it blocks the antenna, your phone ramps up the radiation, and now you're carrying the phone, and on top of that, now it's even stronger power, which is pure nonsense. So it, there's also something to be said that, I guess, the, the, the overall thought in academic is, is also, I think, maybe the products are going to make it worse, which, which it can in certain situations, especially since yeah. the, the phone has this adaptive power level based on antenna uh, connectivity, which is, uh, I read one study was 10,000 fold difference. Um, in one study that I saw, I don't know if maybe it's, it's, it's the worst case scenario possible, but even if it's just a 20% more risk, I mean, it, it is for consumers quite yeah, dangerous no, and, and, to trust and, the wrong and there company. Is, there is a uh, consumer, it, it is the responsibility of consumers to, because even, even that, and there you're talking about a poorly designed product. You can have well-designed products that are misused. And it really is up to consumers to try to understand these issues better. Um, you know, I have people, uh, just to give a random example, right? People emailing in saying, how does your bandana protect my body? Uh, your SYB bandana protect my body from EMF, <laughs> and we have to reply. It only provides protection to the part of the body that it covers. It it, it isn't <laughs> yes. doesn't form this like magical force field all around <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. And earlier uh, you had mentioned canopies, and canopies can deflect stuff uh, inside, which is why once you you make the commitment to sleep inside of a, a an EMF bed canopy, you have to make the commitment never to bring a device inside of that canopy. Because if you do that, as you noted, as you noted, the phone will boost its output and it will start uh, bouncing around all inside of the canopy. So there is a responsibility 
uh, on the part of consumers to 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 understand these things. There's also the responsibility on on, on the part of companies like mine uh, to provide that kind of education. But I would also say, you know, that's the same with a lot of different things. Yeah. Supplements, you can just go out to GNC and buy whatever supplement you want. It's up to you as the consumer to actually do a bit of education and figure out how much should I be taking. I don't want to yeah. be taking so much that it's going to be hurting me, right? Yeah. So the poss- the potential for misuse is, of, is, is, is present in so many different types of products. EMF protection is no different. And so education is critical. Accurate representation of product claims is is critical. And uh, I feel like those are two areas where where at SYB, I try really hard to focus a lot of resources and energy. Uh, but I would like to see more of the industry kind of do the same thing. Yeah, I agree 100%. And just a few other examples come to mind. You know, you use red light therapy, for example, if you use it for a little bit too much, you actually get uh, a cancellation of the benefits. And the, the science is pretty clear on that. If you go into too much dosage of red light therapy, you get uh, basically a no effect, or you get the detrimental effect too much oxidative stress. So that's, again, an example where you can go overboard with uh, devices that are that can be healing, but that can in the end be detrimental in certain contexts. Same thing for supplements. If you, I mean, yeah. you over supplement certain vitamins, it can be quite dangerous. And I, mm-hmm. I think it's a conversation that is kind of not something that is the sexiest conversation to have. Uh, instead of like, oh, this is like these benefits of that vitamin. But in fact, some people have supplemented with certain minerals or vitamins and uh, and gotten quite sick. Then they uh, they start testing with a functional medicine doctor and they say, oh my God, what have you been taking? Well, you know, I've been taking selenium and oh, well, now it's antagonistic to this other mineral and now you're severely deficient and this is why you have headaches. Oh, Oh my God! I didn't think that. Yeah, well, there's. But that a doesn't mean it, yeah, yeah, that doesn't mean it should be banned. It means people exactly. need to take responsibility in, yeah. in what they are and what and, they are doing. And people selling selenium, you know, are, have this res- responsibility towards consumers of educating them a little bit. But I guess yeah, so, some companies do it, and some other companies are just pill pushers. <laughs> and maybe yeah. it's the same thing in the in the EMF protection space. But I want to dive into specific products and one of them that I've been unsure about for years. I went back and forth. I had debates on forums and all sorts of good fun for hours and I still don't know what the the final answer is. Is the laptop or tablet pads where Mm -hmm. you have just a protection one side. It's a square or rectangle. Maybe you put it on your lap and then you put the laptop on that platform and then and then what? And my question has always been, okay, well, let's say I'm on a laptop connected via wireless because a lot of people would use it that way and they still use Wi-Fi. And even even people that follow my work for years, even doctors that know about the dangers, sometimes I ask them, do you still have Wi-Fi at home? The majority say yes. So the reality is it's hard. It's hard to cut down on Wi-Fi to not use it. I don't use it. Uh, I use Ethernet cables all the time. Uh, Even in Airbnbs, I brought my 50 feet cable. That's why I'm able to run it from the the living room to that room and do the interview at night. And plus, it's super stable. But I try to walk my talk. A lot of people cannot get to that step. So my thought is, okay, the laptop is on the platform and it's emitting Wi-Fi. It's emitting, I think, multi-directional. Uh, and I don't know if it's f- spherical, all, dire- all, all directional is, I, I think, how the antenna works. And correct me if I'm wrong. So you're blocking, I guess, a little bit that go- that's going towards your groin, but not necessarily towards your stomach or heart or face. So what kind of protection is this really offering and, and yeah, how no, does that's- it work? Yeah, well, so um, so well, it works as a shield, right? So it works like um, all of my products and all almost all of my products are shields, and a lot of my competitors, it's shielding, right? So it's the same sort of Faraday technology where if you have certain formations of conductive metals, it will block and deflect EMF radiation in the other direction. Mm-hmm. The laptop pad is a very good example to talk about. Um, it is a difficult product because it is not a perfect product. In fact, there are very few 
in my mind, uh, perfect. Well, nothing is a perfect product, but yeah. there, there's ones that are just like, they're great. Like the, the bed canopy, if you set it up right and you're using it, it, it cause it's blocking in every single direction and it, it, it just kind of works with the laptop pad. Um, well, first of all, you know, again, just, just like with carrying phones, you know, the, the best solution is to keep the, the laptop further away from you. You mentioned Wi-Fi. you know, with laptops, it's not just Wi-Fi. it's especially if it's plugged in. Uh, to to outlet power, you have you can have really high electric fields, really high magnetic fields. So there's a lot of forces coming off of a laptop. So the best solution is to to keep it further away. Yeah. Now, how does the so I mentioned how it works? It blocks and deflects. Um, I mentioned that the the better solution is to keep it further away from you. But there are still people who want to use their laptops in their lap, and I almost never do that. But like if I'm in a, in a plane, you know, I'll use my laptop pad or if I'm, uh, in a car or in a, you know, there's a cafe and I need to get some work done and there's no table. I will, yep. I will use my laptop pad. Now you are right that it only blocks in the direction, right? That, that, that it exists, right? So yep. it's, it's under the laptop. So it's going to block away. So that's the point at which the distance factor really comes in to play, right? Because if it's in your lap, obviously your lap is, is zero distance from it. So the exposures there without a product like the laptop pad would be very, very, very high. And by the time it does deflect in the other way, and so let's say you're hunching over your, your laptop pad, it would be deflecting up, but you know, at that point you're talking about you know, feet. And so the power of that exposure uh, is, is, is orders of magnitude lower than the exposure that you're blocking down by your lap. And this is actually one of the few products where there is science showing direct, um, direct physiological improvement from using, uh, uh, protection like this. Um, because there's some pretty, you know, particularly, but not exclusively for men, there's some pretty important stuff down there. Yeah. And so if you're, <laughs> so, um, and, and it also works on desks, um, but it doesn't, it, if, if, if you can keep your laptop further away from you, that is obvious. I mean, that's how we're talking right now. My laptop, I, you know, I have a wired, I, I can't pull it up, but I have a wired external keyboard. I have a wired external trackball. Same. Um, yep. And I keep the laptop further away. But when you, when you are using it in your lap, a, a product like the, the laptop pad does provide you with a lot of protection, but people should be aware it is imperfect and incomplete protection. In, in earlier, you'd mentioned what about the belly and it's, uh, you're right. That is not, it does not provide you any protection at the belly area. And we've been actually trying for a long time to come up with a, a solution, uh, that would do that. Um, it's, it's not like, I mean, it, you can, you can obviously, you could shield in front of, in, in front of the, um, the, the laptop, but you also have to make it foldable and portable. And how do you do that without creating gaps in the shielding? Yeah. And so, so that's presented some engineering challenges. Um, so that is an example of a product and, and it is a popular product and it does what it says and it works, but it is, it is imperfect. It, it is not like a complete protection solution. There's, there's nothing that you can do. People ask me this too about, 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 uh, monitors and, um, you know, how can I protect myself against my monitor? Uh, or rather I should say, you know, uh, like, uh, iPad touchscreens, right there. Mm. There's because there's no material on earth that has yet been discovered that can, um, both, uh, uh, be clear, right? Because you have to be able to see the screen and it has to allow for electroconductivity. And because the touch screen has to work and provide shielding, that material does not exist. Yeah. So there's no way to shield the front of, of a tablet. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so there, there, there are some real gaps in, in what EMF protection can do. And, um, and you honing in on the laptop pad shows that you've identified one of them. Yeah. And you know, it's, I'm, I'm always, I'm kind of always try to be in the middle and on, on these issues. And I've been accused of uh, many things by people who would prefer that we n never use Wi-Fi, never use phones, because these are 
were c kind of contributing to the problem, you know, so uh, a somewhat extremist view where it's you got to do everything right. And, and, and for some people, they are forced to do it because they are electro hypersensitive to a point where they cannot use any of that stuff. And for sure, for them, their vision is, well, no one should use any of this because it's making me sick. So obviously, this is this is on a on a humane standpoint. I understand mm -hmm. this. The reality also is difficult for someone who's trying to educate the public like me and like you is well okay <laughs> you, we're kind of preaching to the choir the the converted already and they are ready to hear okay well guys drop the wi-fi this is this is toxic for your family drop it and and go ethernet cables and some of our course members do it some of our members inside the EMF circle, the new membership that we launched a few months ago, do it, but a lot don't, even yeah. those that understand the problem. So imagine just the the overall public, oh, they're no. not ready for these steps, and, and I cannot go there physically, turn off their Wi-Fi, twist their arm, and tell them, and it's gonna, that approach is not gonna, is not gonna work. So forcing them to, uh, to change how they behave around technology, so it's always yeah. it's it's always this this dance between what's what's best for them and what are people actually willing to do. And right? I love it's, how that you mentioned that we're preaching to the choir um, because uh, and, and I know like you know someone like you if if you could get on you know Oprah you know you would you would just you would talk and talk and talk and and state the position and get it. But most of us. Um, in this space, we, particularly those with something to market, we are specifically targeting people who are most inclined to buy into whatever message we are trying to sell. Yeah. So for me, it's EMF protection. Uh, for you, it's it's knowledge and EMF hygiene. And you know, one of the I was I was <laughs> I was just <laughs> this really hit home for me um, just in October, and I was on Dr. Phil. And they introduced me as, and our next guest doesn't even have a microwave oven. And like, like I was some friggin' alien, you know, because I don't have a microwave oven. And it was just like, wow, this is like, this is so different. How do you even talk to people? Like, how do you get this message across? And yep. it is something, I mean, it's going to take years. But, but yes, people uh, who have this more, um, uh, lack of a better term, uh, religious view about what you know what EMF standards should be and how people should be using uh, these technologies you know they need to understand that we are still a very small minority here and yep. uh, the, the larger public not only doesn't care yet um, but they are literally addicted to the, the technologies that are the sources of this oh stuff. yeah oh yeah and it is it is a big big challenge over the next 10 and 20 years to get this message broken through to that to that and and it's lit literally every every company in the world all, all, at this point every major player in the world uh, or most of them profit in one way or another off of EMF exposure and and even if they're not selling devices they they need you to experience their platforms or whatever it is on some kind of device that is exposing you to EMF Google doesn't make ad revenue unless you're exposed to EMF radiation Amazon doesn't sell a product unless you're exposed to EMF radiation uh, so you know people like to talk about the wireless industry I mean and, and they have done some real damage to to the nature of science and the state of the debate but it yeah. is literally every company now that their whole profit model depends on EMF exposure and then you have the public that is addicted to these experiences. And then that's before you even get to the fact that EMF is incredibly complicated. And, and if you don't explain it right, it can put people to sleep in three and a half seconds. <laughs> and so there's some real challenges here. Yeah. And so the approach where, yeah, we need to get rid of Wi-Fi, we need to get rid of cell phones, that is just completely impractical. That is not how any of this is going to be resolved. I, I agree. And yeah, we think alike on this. Some some people would st strongly disagree, trash this conversation, and that's and that's fine. You know, there's going to be a spectrum of of different opinions, and with I I, I can I can respect any position, um, whatever 
<laughs> and even the position that 5G is marvelous and uh, it, there's one position I don't respect is uh, these engineers who uh, try to debate me on Instagram lately and telling me that non-ionizing radiation is perfectly safe uh, and has no biological effect whatsoever. And I don't want to start to rant here, but I, I told them, well, what about blue light? You know, it's non-ionizing and yet we have a hormonal effect through the eye, through the skin, and they never respond. They n yeah, well, when, when people say it's totally safe, they're, ignore they're literally ignoring thousands of well, studies exactly and, 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 and i kind of they're being very to, selective yeah yeah, yeah i they're kind of and it's just you know it's their worldview and it, it's almost it's been reinforced through decades of of being convinced that this is a case and some of them are radio operators or maybe they're electrical engineers they don't they don't want to do harm they don't want to think about the fact that all this stuff might be unsafe i mean it's uh so it's a bit of uh i don't know they become a little bit I think their thinking becomes deformed or they, they, they want to, they, they view what they want to view <laughs> basically. Yeah. And they, they, they hold on to their position for their real life. So anyway, I don't, I don't want to get into this because no, I no, but that's, that's exactly yeah. why EMF protection is, uh, products are so important because the, the, the larger society is not going to make the kinds of changes that, and you and I, uh, I think we would call ourselves maybe more moderate in terms of what our expectations yeah. are for broader society. They're not even going to be making those changes, the moderate changes in the near term. And so beyond basic EMF hygiene, like if you live in a city, I mean, EMF hygiene uh, does a lot. Like, I think it was you that said, I stole this line from you, right? It, you know, no matter how many cell towers you see, no matter how many Wi-Fi networks you see, it's what you do with the tech that's closest to your body that can make the most difference. Yes. And that is true. But if you live in a city, you still see, like, I'm, I'm in a city right now. I look out the window. I see, like, 10 cell towers. I pick up, like, 15 Wi-Fi yeah. networks. Yeah. Uh, I can't control those sources. And so at that point, it really is... Uh, EMF protection products that are legitimate and that work um, and that uh, are used correctly are the only solution uh, other than leaving the city. And so that's why they, they are so important. Now, the work that, the, like the, the academics and the activists who say, you know, we really need to focus on safety standards, we really need to focus on awareness, I mean, God bless them. They are right. We do need better safety standards, and the work that they are doing is very important. Yeah. But that still leaves consumers with really basic needs at this point. Yeah, and, and, and the question is, what do they do now until things become much safer, which might be, I don't know, God forbid, 30 years down the road. I, I don't know. I don't know how much time it's going to take until we have cell phones with shielded antennas, uh, we have cell towers which reduce emissions. We have maybe Internet of Things devices that turn off automatically when no one is around. Or, or kind of, there's a lot of things that could be implemented tomorrow morning and that would cut down emissions by a large fraction. I want to say 99% to be bold, but I don't know if that's the case. But I mean, even cell towers in 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 in. Uh, in the middle of nature where you have zero users connected to the tower should be in sleep mode just to respect nature, you know, and to, mm -hmm. to minimize. Uh, at, at the moment, we're more like maximize emissions rather yeah. than, than minimize. So we're, and we're still increasing emissions. So, you know, it's, it'll get, it's getting worse at the moment. And still. it's the number of nodes. So even if you made each, each node, right, each device, if you made each device, like, I don't know, pick a number, 90% safer, in terms of emissions, the coming decades are going to see massive explosions in the number of these nodes, right? Because the, everything is becoming, you know, smart. Everything is becoming uh, network connected, network aware. Even if it's not on a network, devices like LiDAR, you know, that are in self-driving cars, the, the form of rate, right? So the number of the uh, ex sources is going to continue to explode. So even if you made each individual source 90% safer, you are still looking at a future in which exposures are going to be increasing. Yeah, and it's still too much according to the science we already have from previous generations. So yeah, when I look at the, con uh, I, I looked again at the conclusions of Bio Initiative lately and just looking at their recommendation, one of them was to cut down all emissions to 0 0.6 volts per meter uh, as like the maximum permissible 
exposure from any cell tower, for example, or even any phone. I think that could work. Uh, I don't know the engineering side. I mean, I would have to to talk with a cell phone engineer that tells me, okay, at these levels, we can get good enough connectivity. But at least if we had these these ceilings of emissions that are much lower, then engineers are forced to re redesign and rethink their, their use of technology. And instead of the party, guys, the party is on and we can go to maximum power level all the time. No, now we have restrictions and you gotta play within these guidelines, right? You, you gotta play, we've got a little fence and guys, you, you this, is, this is your sandbox and you play within those confines. And I think they would do it. That's that's the thing. Over time, well, if they're forced one, to, they would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one competitor would find a way to do it, and they would have the. Oh, best you're product. oh, you're talking about oh, you're talking about just capitalist forces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah, but then you need the consumer awareness. You need you need enough yeah. people who who are aware that lower EMF is a is a is a product virtue, and then they'll yeah, they'll well, be willing to yeah, pay and, and it, switch. And it's, and it's either regulations that are going to enforce it or the public that sees benefits and now it becomes kind of a trend and i hope we can see that but um i think oh it's definitely yeah, yeah it's definitely trending i mean the the like the the podcast that i'm i've been uh appearing on for the last 18 months um i mean they're they're, they're largely in the health and wellness space so they're people that are open to these kinds of ideas uh, but these are people who had like just heard about EMF and they yeah. were just really excited to find someone to come on and talk about it. And, you know, normally they talk about uh, intermittent fasting or, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever, whatever else they're, yeah. but they're like, I really want to talk about EMF. The awareness is growing, but it is still incredibly small. And when yeah. you compare it to the market forces of wireless emissions and, and digital experiences. Yeah. We're, we're kind of just at, at the beginning of the, the hockey stick, uh, a gra graph there and eventually it's going to really take off but i mean just the number of different courses or or, or different people talking about emf it's it's increasing i, I agree and uh, we digress a little bit i think this is super interesting <laughs> though as, as far as like philosophical discussion around emf activism which is super important and i know that a lot of people listening to my podcast will love it because Again, we, we challenge each other and there are some people that are more of the, the extreme side of activism and some people that are just curious and don't do anything when it comes to EMF protection also. So I think I attract both sides because I try to be to be moderate about it. But um, we talked about EMF blocking products that actually work and one that uh, my wife has used during her pregnancy is an EMF blocking blanket. Uh, mm -hmm. especially because uh, she loves social media, she uses her phone, and she was using her phone pretty close to the belly, and the belly over time, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And when you think it's, oh, no, You're no. You're not allowed it, to say that. It, it yeah. probably yeah. cannot get bigger. My God, it gets bigger and bigger. And bigger. <laughs> so eventually, yeah, that, that the reality is it, it is surprisingly like the child eventually becomes very close to the exposure. That's the thing. The fetus is very small at the beginning and is more protected by this layer around it. And and, and I think there are actual studies of the symmetry where the fetus, when it, it becomes, uh, let's say, in the, in the late stages of pregnancy, actually there's more exposure from outside sources because now there's just a thin layer separating the baby. That's why you can see the baby kick, for example. So at one point, my wife started uh, using airplane mode uh, and uh, I, she really took it to heart to change her habits around that. So I was super proud of her. And it was the first time that, well, of course, it's not just her and her body. There's also the baby. So she started uh, putting it on airplane mode when it was uh, in her bag. So so that way the phone is not, you know, emitting towards the abdomen. But also we, we got that blanket and she used it over the belly when she was texting and just scrolling social media. And in that case, I think the, the, the blocking effect is pretty clear. Some mm -hmm. people say, well... You know, what would happen if someone by mistake, I don't know, you're feeling cold and you put the, the, the entire blanket over you and then you text underneath. Are you increasing exposure? Could it yeah. be blocking the signal? No, because if you're, you yeah, 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 no, no. Worse, right? Yeah, you uh, with EMF shielding, you always want the shielding in between your body and whatever source you okay. are trying to protect against. Yeah. 
So, um, and other, and it's like what I was saying earlier, like if you, if you make the investment in an EMF canopy, you then are making a promise to yourself that you're not going to be using your phone in bed. Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> right, because you, you need the shielding in between your body and whatever source you're trying to protect against. Now, the, 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 per, the perhaps more uh, controversial or interesting version of that question is your wife is in bed. She's, she has the, belly, uh, the, the blanket over her belly. Her phone is there. Um, but the, the neighbor's Wi-Fi, you know, downstairs mm, is coming back up. Yeah. And, and that is an imper... So, I mean, the, 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 the perfect answer to that is to fully wrap yourself, right? But a lot of people aren't going to do that. So at that point, what you're trying to do is protect against the bigger exposure, which is the phone yep. right up against the belly. And the Wi-Fi network that is 30, 40, 50 feet away is a much lesser exposure. So even though it is an imperfect uh, protection scenario, it still, in that case, would make sense to use a belly blanket or a baby blanket in between the phone and the belly. Because again, as, as, as you know, and as you tell people all of the time, right, the distance is the key factor here. And phones are such huge sources. So with apparel, um, well, I, I lump blankets in with apparel. Maybe I shouldn't. But with any, any body-worn protection, right? If, unless you're wrapping yourself fully in it, you, you, you really do need to consider what exposures you're trying to protect against versus what other exposures might be out there so that you're not actually doing more harm than good. Yeah. But that, that but makes a apparel lot of sense. is, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, yeah uh, I was just saying, you know, it makes a lot of sense to block the sources that are very intense, even though when it comes to the science, I know it's always uh, kind of this this side thought that I always have in any conversation is, well, we don't really know what the safe levels are. So uh, th there's this this argument even by scientists that, well, even if you reduce exposure, it's still unsafe. However, I think it's from what I could gather, it is safely the most dangerous use to use a phone at full intensity next to the head. That would be mm -hmm. the number one way to actually for it to be deadly. If you develop, let's say, a, glioblast a glioblastoma, for example, mm -hmm. that would be like the number one most dangerous use of anything EMF-wise in my mind, besides maybe living right next to a cell tower at like a few feet or something completely crazy. But as far as machines go, so in, in my mind, it still makes sense to minimize exposure from these devices that we know are, are likely the most dangerous. Uh, but then again, that combined to habits and, and minimization of, you minimize your screen time. Maybe you can um, also use a wired solution. Of course, I try to also advocate for these, but uh, again, a lot of people will say, oh, you know what, there's a dongle and I'm not sure how it fit in and I don't know, I forgot about it. Sorry, Nick. Yeah. So that's the reality for most people. In that case, I think a blanket, especially for pregnancy, I think it makes a lot of sense. There's concerning studies uh, four or five of them in the last 15 years on large cohorts. I think one was in Denmark and also other European countries, mainly around uh, the the prenatal exposures by mothers mm -hmm. to their, or not by mothers, I don't, don't want to blame them. It's <laughs> them and husbands and society and everything. Sure, so sure, sure, sure. Prenatal exposure of EMFs to the fetus and then the risks of developing asthma uh, yep. or allergies or ADD, ADHD A symptoms. ADHD, yeah. So there's strong correlation. So just that tells me there might be something there in the formation of the brain or the immune system. And if you can take that 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 step during the those nine months, it's so precious. I, th I think the rewards can be immense. Yeah, I mean, the way I try to summarize this, because, you know, I, 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 uh, I read the science, uh, maybe not quite as much as you anymore, um, but I don't folk like my job isn't being like the expert scientist going in and explaining all of these studies. Mm -hmm. So when I when I talk about this, the way I try to explain it to people is um, w what we find is that EMF uh, exposure, non ionizing EMF exposure, even at levels well within safety standards, yield bio, uh, negative biological outcomes in essentially every biological system in which they are measured, yep. right? 
EMF doesn't just impact the brain. It doesn't just impact the blood. It doesn't just impact the endocrine system. It doesn't, you know, just impact uh, the gut. Uh, it, it, it impacts everything. And that is uh, due to uh, some mechanisms I think we now know, such as, you know, the, the impact on DNA strand breaks and voltage-gated calcium channels. It's also due, I suspect, to many mechanisms we don't yet know, but yeah. it impacts everything. You literally don't find a biological system without an impact from it. And the younger that you are, uh, the more damage it is going to do. And of course, there's nothing younger than a fetus. So that is the most important time in life in which to provide that kind of protection. Yeah, well said. And it, it answers a question for me. It's just... I guess when people use any EMF protection um, blanket or case or laptop pad, just make sure to study how you should be using it, mm -hmm. right? Just make sure to take the, this extra step and not kind of, oh, I'm putting the blanket on and just you have to think about it a little bit. Yes. So you, you think about the signal, you think this is not a phone, this is a, just my notepad, but you know, the phone is emitting and I'm putting the blanket between the phone and my body. So therefore it's shielding this part, which is the important part. But you, I, I think you gotta think about it a little bit more than just you know popping a pill for detox, glutathione, or I don't know what, what it is, but just think about it the same way that you, you would use, uh, I don't know, red light therapy panel. You would look at, okay, well, is it a uh, foot? of distance is it six inches how how many minutes per body parts right all these questions so just make sure that when you purchase a product or before you purchase a product you can ask questions i know that as far as i'm concerned shield your body i just, i only heard great things about you guys uh customer support very fast very helpful but also you guys are into education which i like very much and you're I haven't come across a single thing that you did personally for Shield Your Body, whether it's a webinar or a newsletter that I disagree with. So I have yet to find that. And even Thank you. if I, I assume even, you're looking. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, maybe you got lucky and there's something out there that I would say, oh, no, I don't agree. And, and probably and maybe maybe in that case, I, I could be wrong also. But just to say that this is very, very aligned with uh, what I found to be true. And I'm still learning just as you. But I I find it revealing that when you go to shieldyourbody.com, I, I think it's as much uh, as a, a it, it's 50% e-commerce uh, uh, site with products that work and 50% educational site that is very, very well done and very thorough in how much content you're able to put out. Sometimes I, I look at it, and I'm like, how, 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 how does it? <laughs> put out so many blogs, so many webinars. Oh my God. I mean, I do my best to, to put out some content with that podcast, but this is, this is good stuff. <laughs> and this is a compliment really to how much Thank you. good content you put out there. So I wanted to highlight that. And, uh, that that's really all I had today. I think that the, the overall message is regardless, if you choose shield your body or another company, you got to do your homework about how the devices are built. It, it's not enough to see a testing of the materials. You, yes. you gotta know that manufacturers know their stuff. So that's why I don't take chances with too many companies. And um, Brian Hoyer, my colleague, told me, check out Shield Your Body. According to Brian, and I trust his word a lot, it's one of the few companies that he trusts. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I won't take your, your, your word for it, but I'm gonna check it out. And since then, I've only seen great products that I know work and uh, improvements on products and, and also someone that puts out a lot of good information. So this is really why I'm, I was excited to have you again. And is there anything else you wanted to chat about specifically? Um, and mention your website, of course, and anything. Oh, sure. Yeah. You Shieldyourbody.com. Yeah. And um, I guess, yeah, since, since I have a minute here, I will say, sure. you meant, uh, and I totally agree with this, knowing how to use your products um, that not that knowing how to use an EMF protection product is just as important as picking a, a legitimate product, and that is that is vital. And one of the things that we have been focused on is increasing the number of products that make it safer to carry your phone, because it is, it, yeah. in my view, um, for many many people, 
even as you, like we talked about, you look out the window and you see all these cell towers and you see all these Wi-Fi networks and you have all of these exposures, because phones are so powerful and because when they're in your pocket or in your bra, when they're right up against your body, uh, there's no distance. For a lot of people, carrying the phone is one of the biggest, if not the biggest source of exposure in their lives. And so uh, we have been focused on bringing out new products that make it safer to carry your phone. Um, and, and because the way they're designed, right, these, these are all shielded on one side only, the side that goes between the, the phone and your body. And because it's obvious which is the front and which is the back, uh, like on a phone pouch or our new pouch deluxe or on the backpack, we, we're, making it, we're, we're making it very hard to use it incorrectly. And that has been a, 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 a big design choice that we have made. And those are the products right now that, like I said, we have the new, the new pouch deluxe, uh, which is a big improvement over our, our phone pouch. And we have the new backpack and we have other ones in, in design in, uh, in, in, in the roadmap right now. Um, I think that it, it has been very important to us to try to build these products that are, are almost impossible to misuse because so, you know, we, you can do a lot on the education side and, and I appreciate you, you noting that, that we, we try, but you still want to make the product as, 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 uh, as easy to use correctly as possible. And so that's what we've been spending a, a lot of time doing. And again, that's why I think we talked about this last time, but that's why I don't make a phone case. It is too easy to put, if you have an EMF shielded phone case and you put it in your pocket, it's just too easy to put it in the wrong way, you know, and then, yeah. then you start increasing your exposure. So um, anyway, that's, that's, I guess what I would sign off with, but I, I really appreciate you having me on. I, I really liked this talk. This was, the, the, the topics we talked about today are ones that mean a lot to me, and I, no one ever asked me about them. So I really appreciate you inviting me on and, and, and guiding the discussion this way. My pleasure. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a somewhat lonely world for EMF educators out there in a topic that's unpopular. <laughs> and then uh, most people in society think uh, it's uh, hocus pocus or ghost hunting or something like that still after all these years. So it definitely warms the heart to, uh, to find, uh, <laughs> l uh, l you know, uh, like-minded individuals like you. And I appreciate it so much. So shieldyourbody.com. And I don't even know what's the coupon, guys. There's probably one underneath the video or somewhere in the show notes. I have one for for your products that is probably uh, available all the time. I'll post it. I won't uh, screw it up right now. So shield your body. <laughs> and I'm going to also link to the overpowered book and our previous discussions and also the different studies I talked about, the laptop pad, all the products, the bio initiative report and everything else in between. Art, thank you so much for being here today. And I hope that we can have a conversation again down the line. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank you so much.